I am a kid. I am a squid. The best thing that I can say about Splatoon is that I just can't stop playing it. The game came out just over a week ago and I've already put in more than 24 hours, and that's insane. It's been a very, very long time since a game grabbed me like this. Even when I'm playing games that I like, after an hour or so I feel like I need a break, but with Splatoon I just can't stop. When I'm at work, I'm thinking about playing. And part of what took me so long to make this video was that I just couldn't stop playing it. I was making excuses like, well, I should play a little bit more so I know what I'm talking about, but I already knew what I was talking about, I just didn't want to stop playing. And I'm not a fan of online games at all, especially shooters. They give me really bad anxiety and are usually just harsh, unwelcoming environments. But Splatoon is different. Everything's so colorful and inviting and you don't even really need to be good at shooters to help your team. If you can point your gun at the ground and make it your color when it wasn't before, then you're helping your team. And the matches are short, only three minutes, so even if you're not doing well, it won't be long before you're on to the next round, and the constant reshuffling of teams means that maybe the person who was your mortal nemesis last round will be fighting alongside you in the next. By keeping things fast and loose, and by not punishing the losing team, Splatoon keeps itself fun no matter what's happening or how well you're doing. The only reward that the winning team gets is an extra 300 points, which, in the grand scheme of things, isn't much, and if you're good enough, even without that bonus, you could still wind up with a higher point total than people who were on the winning team. The game has three weapon types to choose from, shooters, chargers, and rollers, and many models of each with different stats and sub-weapons. They're all really well balanced and cater to a ton of different playstyles. My personal favorite is the roller, and if I can toot my own horn, I'm actually pretty good with it. So one of the things that has been one of the biggest complaints about Splatoon so far is the lack of voice chat. And I want to say right now that I think that if Splatoon had voice chat, the game wouldn't be nearly as fun as it is right now. Because even the producers have said, without voice chat, what it does is it evens the playing field, it makes it uh, open and accessible for everybody, and it keeps teams from having an advantage, which I think is great, and that's part of what makes Splatoon so much fun. And especially with the teams being constantly reshuffled, you don't need that voice chat. You don't need to strategize, because the only strategy is, hey, is it green over here? No, make it green. So I feel like if you really want to talk to your friends when you play, load up Skype on your phone and do that and have a good time. But I feel like the exclusion of voice chat actually makes the game a lot better rather than worse. And Splatoon's aesthetic is just off the freaking chain. Who knew hip, fashion-conscious squid teenagers would create such a compelling world? Inkopolis is a super cool hub world, and it feels like if Jet Grind Radio was crossed with a combo meal from Long John Silver's. Even the shop owners that sell you your stylish clothes and weapons are bursting with personality and oceanic puns, with my personal favorite being Krusty Sean, the Japanese tiger prawn who owns the shoe store Shrimp Kicks. The Squid Sisters Callie and Marie greet you every time you boot up the game to tell you which maps are currently in the rotation. The pop star duo are definitely the stars of the show and some of the most charming characters Nintendo's made in quite a while. And if online battling isn't your thing, the game does feature a pretty solid single player campaign, pitting your inkling against the Octarian Empire in a series of levels that definitely give off a Super Mario Galaxy vibe. The story that goes along with it is actually pretty good and gives a lot of backstory to Inkopolis and the history of the Inklings, and if I can say, features one of the coolest final bosses ever. It's not worth the price of admission alone, but it's definitely a worthwhile way to spend your time in between online turf wars. If you manage to snag the amazing looking Splatoon amiibo, each one unlocks different challenges that unlock special gear for your Inkling. They're just twists on the regular single player missions by giving you different weapons like the splat roller or charger that mix things up considerably. I don't want to give anything away, but beating the final boss with a splat roller is legitimately one of the hardest things I've ever done in a video game. 
Some early reviews have criticized Splatoon for being light on content, but Nintendo's been rolling out updates regularly that have added new maps, weapons, and game modes, all for free. Producer Hisashi Nogami says this was done to give players time to appreciate the content fully by rolling out a bit at a time, rather than dropping it all at once, and it's actually working. When a new map or weapon drops, it feels like an event, like the other night when the paintbrush became available and everyone was out experimenting with it at the same time. It keeps the game constantly feeling fresh because whenever you think you're comfortable, something else has dropped in and it gives you something new to play with. One of the things added was a ranked mode that's essentially a King of the Hill playlist. I'm not the biggest fan of it because the added competitiveness and consequences for the losing team are kind of the opposite of what makes Splatoon so accessible, but it's there if you're into it. They've said more modes will be rolled into the ranked rotation later on, so maybe something else will wind up striking my fancy. So, in case you couldn't tell by now, I love Splatoon. It's incredible, and everything about it just works. I've been hopping on every night, and pretty much everybody on my Wii U friends list has been playing, and we've been hopping in and playing together, and it's just, it's a great time. And it's not very often these days that you get games that are just a great time. Splatoon sets out to just be fun and accessible for everybody, and it's not concerned with, oh, here's a dark, gritty storyline. It's just... It's colorful, and it's great, and it's bright, and it's fun, and we need more games like this. And considering the game has something like a 97.4 or some ridiculous number sell-through rate in Japan, where console games don't sell, it shows you that it's doing something right. This game is a hit, and you need to play it. Splatoon is an instant classic, plain and simple. It's enraptured the Wii U player base and shown that yes, Nintendo can come out swinging with a new IP. It's addictive and endlessly replayable, good for short bursts or a holy crap I've been playing for three hours marathon. I can't say enough good things about Splatoon. If you have a Wii U, you want Splatoon. If you don't have a Wii U, you want Splatoon. It's amazing. I'm gonna go play right now. See ya.